All right, everyone. Welcome once again to the Friday edition. Well, I guess it's the only edition we do of the Manufacturing E-Commerce Success Series. I'm one of your co-hosts, Damon Pastalka. And with me, I have my friend right over there, Kurt Anderson. Take it away, Kurt. That guy, Damon, thank you so much. What I'm at a loss of words because we have a professional speaking coach here today. I know. So like I've been practicing all week. So let me get into my intro. And and ironically, our guest today just put out a blog post of what not to say in an intro. And I've probably already done it, but we're going to uh, dig in anyway. So guys, please a warm, heartfelt welcome to our dear friend, Rosemary Ravenout. Rosemary, happy Friday. How are you? Terrific. I'm going to point it right back to you <laughs> and say thank how, you. I am about- thrilled to share the screen with both of you. And looking forward to a great conversation. Well, I just, you know, so now I'm going to slide into a little bit of a, a little bit of an intro. So you have, so, so first off, I have to tell everybody. So welcome to the program, Dan Bigger. We got started right on time, my friend. So here we go. Thanks, and I Dan. know a couple of people were wondering where we are. We start at 132, 1032. And yep. here we are. So guys, Rosemary is di- a dynamo. She is a pioneer. She has a vast history of, uh, you know, corporate career. AT&T, Avon. We were just talking about, I believe, uh, A&E uh, channel, uh, the History Channel. Univision, uh, who am I leaving out? Dis- uh, Discovery Channel, Sony, Toyota. So, kind of the who's who that you've worked for. One of your taglines, I love. You know, your smile is your superpower. And so, this can you talk? Let's start there, Rosemary. Talk about how is your smile your superpower? The smile is the universal language. It doesn't matter if we're talking about manufacturing or aerospace, whatever. We're talking about human beings connecting. Yeah. And the smile is one of those very powerful facial expressions, perhaps the most powerful, that transcends language and culture. And it's the one thing that you can bring to any conversation, particularly in a virtual digital setting where we don't have more than two senses, to bring a human quality to the communication. So when you're smiling and people know whether it's a fake smile, like a pursed lip smile or a natural smile where you're showing a little teeth, that sort of breaks down the barriers. It makes you a friendly person with which to engage and people's receptivity opens up. So it is, it is something we sometimes forget to do because we're so caught up in getting it right and not forgetting what we want to say, right? And staying on time and making sure we look good and the best thing you can do to energize any conversation is to start with a smile. That is so, man, Yeah, you just made great. me smile. You wore my heart and made me <laughs> smile there, Rosemary. So, and again, what I absolutely love. So uh, first off, can please connect with Rosemary here on LinkedIn. You mm-hmm. absolutely want to check out her website. It's, it's her name.com, right? RosemaryRavenall.com. Yes. You have a newsletter that, you know, I, I get a ton of newsletters and sometimes, you know, be mindful, respectful. You know, we're all busy. It's hard to read through everybody's newsletter it sends out. I read yours religiously. Your tips are just off the charts. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, I want to slide in one thing. You talk about, you know, it's universal. though. That smile is universal. You have a great track record history. You are the, uh, as a pioneer in communication leadership, you were the first Hispanic at uh, MSNBC. Is that, do I have that correct? The first contributor? Way back in its inaugural season. Wow. And share a little bit of like what was, yeah. and again, like as a pioneer, as in, you know, Damon, I'm just, usually I do this at the end. I'm going right here at the beginning. We're one, we're girl dads. We are so proud of our daughters yeah. and what we love are inspirational women like yourself that just, you know, for this next generation, share with us that story about how you broke that ceiling there at MSNBC. Yes. It was a, a really a career highlight, and there there are highlights. There's a highlight reel on my YouTube, which is a little bit of sort of obscure because obviously that was a long time ago, and it is something that I'm so proud of because I was chosen among several Hispanic community leaders, communication leaders in New York in the New York City uh, tri-state area to be a representative on the panel of contributors that would really bring the Latino point of view into the conversation. Mm -hmm. So at the time they were experimenting with the format that we now see has evolved and we see MSNBC in a very different, uh, more mature format, right? Of course, adjusting to the, to the times we live, but it was, it was sort of breaking out of the news mold and into more of a opinions from people who represent the viewership 
mm-hmm. weighing in impromptu, unguided on the news of the day. Right. And that was extremely challenging. So I was the 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 um, interview process and the audition process was rather s- simple. I had already been vetted because of my leadership in various community organizations. But the that first day on set was absolutely awesome because you know I'm I it's live. You don't have a rehearsal. Yeah, you're you're sitting there around a table, and they don't even give you at the time they didn't give us the topic of the day. So how can you anticipate what you're going to say and make sure that what you're saying is not only intelligent, but that is representative of the people you are there, you know, to, to advocate for, right. right? So how can I be aligned with Latinos who are watching, but still be sound like I know what I'm talking about? Right. That was, that was an extraordinary training opportunity because right. it's just going in blind. How do you interact with the other panelists? How do you, I mean, it was the time of Katie Couric, for example, right? Mm-hmm. And it was it, it was just formidable because it really forced me to say, okay, I'm here. I am going to do my best. I'm going to be respectful of my other panelists. I'm going to be a little bit controversial because the mm-hmm. sparks is, is what, what drives ratings. Sure. I'm going to be truthful. And I'm going to say, if I don't know the answer to something, I'm going to say, I don't know, but I do know about this. So it was an immensely valuable stepping stone to really a future and very successful career as a corporate spokesperson. And because of that being sort of a cornerstone, I feel that I bring all this this vast experience to the work I'm doing now with clients. So it it was, I would say, it's probably the most difficult thing I did for over a year. And I loved every second of it. Wow, that is wow. awesome, guys. So, um, th- Damon, this is going to be so good. So, yeah, yeah. And we want to give a big hello to everybody here today. Deb, James, Dan Baker, my dear friend Val. So, guys, this is a treat. And so let's tie into this. So our program, Manufacturing E-Commerce Success, Rosemary, and we were just talking about before we went, we went live. What does this have to, why is this relevant for our manufacturers? And you just, you, man, you like dropped the mic before we we even went live. You mm-hmm. shared with us a comment about why is public speaking so important? Could you please kind of uh, enlighten our folks on, on that comment there? Well, public speaking is the most important soft skill that you can have in business, period. It doesn't matter what your industry is. It could be manufacturing, aerospace, biomedicine, whatever it is. You need to communicate your ideas to people. You need to explain what you do. Now, of course, you may not always be in leadership, but you still need to interact with others in a way that creates harmony, in a way that advances not only your point of view or what you bring to the solution, but it also brings people together. It unites Mm -hmm. people around a common cause. If you don't speak, If you don't let, now, when I say speak, there's people who don't have the use of their voices, but speak in other ways. Yes. So Mm -hmm. we're talking about communicating your ideas. The, the, the power of the, of the personal voice is, is so extraordinary. It, it transcends really any description that that we could have. Hence is why maybe it's so frightening to people. And we'll talk about fear of public speaking a little bit later on, because I have a lot to say about that. But look, if you do, if you are in business at any level, you need to have fundamental understanding of how to do speaking in public. Now, in public may mean to a small group of people, to your cohorts, to your coworkers. It may mean uh, speaking to startup uh, investors, to possible collaborators. It could be to the, the bank representative who's going to write your loan. It's, right. It may be to the person you're going to choose as a, as a soulmate and marry. It may be the commencement speech or the graduation speech that you're going to deliver. It, it has many different ways of expressing. People fear all of those things because they feel that they are not naturally talented right. and that they don't take the time to prepare and to, you know, like, like, like exercising in some muscle. You need to practice it in order to be good mm-hmm. at it. Right. Yep. And if you don't, then you're <laughs> going to be in your little bubble of fear and, and tension and anxiety. And that's right. going to come across. Right, man. And Gail was just, <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Here's Gail said, go ahead, Kurt. Sorry. 
communicating your ideas. We do need more of this great info again uh, today, Kurt Anderson and Damon. So, uh, so Gail, you're going to absolutely love this. So you're just getting a, 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 a taste or a treat here with uh, my dear friend, Rosemary. Now, Rosemary, I have the honor and privilege, Gail, don't be jealous. So uh, we're part of a networking group together. I'm in part of this little mastermind. I get to, I hang out with Rosemary every other week and I am just absolutely in awe and learn. That's why we're here today. And I want to, uh, Again, guys, you have to connect with Rosemary on LinkedIn. Check out her website. On your website, you have a great quote. I absolutely love this quote. Uh, there's two types of speakers in the world. The uh, the nervous uh, for uh, of public speaking and the liars. <laughs> and, yeah, and no think, doubt. Is, is that Mark Mark Twain, I think? That's so, Mark Twain. Mark Twain. And so, again, guys, if you, uh, if, if you haven't heard me say it before, check out her website. Check out her news newsletter. But talk, let's let's go into that a little bit. Like, you know, you're talking about how important that communication, that soft skill is. Let's take a, a little step further there, Rosemary. Just keep, let's just keep this going. It is, it's something, look, it, it comes out in two ways. It manifests in two ways. Yeah. One is the power of the ideas, but right? you need to have a good grasp of how to synthesize ideas, mm -hmm. how to make them concise, how to make them understandable. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we're not talking to ourselves, we're talking to other people. And one of the things that, that people who speak in public or who fear speaking in public fail to understand is that it's not about me. It's not a soliloquy just to hear my voice. It's to communicate with all of you. And if I'm not connecting, then I'm not successful as a speaker. I've wasted my time and yours. Mm -hmm. And so if we understand what is it that people need and how can I be of service? If you put it in the framework of how can I be of service to you? How can I help you be better? Mm -hmm. How can we help each other, right? Collaborate and do things more successfully together. Mm -hmm. That's fundamental. So the, 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 the value of the idea, the ability to be, um, to synthesize the value mm -hmm. and then to put your own human experience into it to bring your stories or examples of other stories because stories connect to the heart directly. And the best way to people's minds is through the heart, through an emotional story where we can relate, where we see ourselves in that story. Mm -hmm. right? You can tell me a story about something that's totally foreign to me, but if you put it into really human terms, then I can say, yeah, I felt that way before. I, mm -hmm. I, I understand what happens then. You really start to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Right. You're, yeah. you're hooked and you want to know more. Mm -hmm. So the the way people create their content is super important. Then there comes the mechanics of delivery. And that's something that is also important. And that can be better learned. It's easier to learn that than the other, because the other entails a lot of other pieces, moving pieces. But the mechanics of it. You can learn at a Toastmaster meeting. You, know, you can you can you can you can take a course with me. Uh, mm -hmm. You can. There's a lot of great tutorial material online that that helps you understand how to move, how to modulate your voice, how to use what I call the assets. You know your your appearance, mm -hmm. your staging and styling. By staging and styling, I mean not only where you are in the virtual set, which is important. Mm -hmm. These days, this is not going to go away, folks. This right, yeah. virtual is going to maybe morph into more of a hybrid where people are going to be co-located in one space. And then you're going to be addressing people who are distributed remotely. So how do you manage and toggle between the two? Mm -hmm. That's a skill that we all have to step up to. Mm -hmm. But so, so it's the staging, the appearance, the staging and the styling. Where are you physically? And with your appearance comes what you wear. What you wear is super important. Because that, that telegraphs to people a sense of a pride in your appearance, but it also colors also have a strong psychological impact on people. And maybe it's brand related or maybe it's your personal brand. So all these things come into play. Then after the ASS comes E, which is my favorite, which is the energy and the emotion which has to do with how you use your body, how you use the voice, how you use your facial expressions, your smile, all these things that convey energy and emotion. And then the T is the technology, which in the virtual space means how to use your webcam, how to use your microphone, your lights, your setup, how to use the streaming platform effectively on a basic level. Mm -hmm. Plus how to use the microphone on a stage, where to look when you are on a stage or a platform or a panel in front of other people. Mm 
right? How do you how do you engage everyone? How do you work your audiovisual while you're talking? All this has to do with using your technology successfully. So that's the more the mechanical part. And there's a lot to that as well. But I sometimes prefer to tell people, get your, your essence, your idea, really solid, your story, get that really your narrative well-defined because that without that, you could have the best mechanics in the world, but if you're not saying anything, then you're, you're, you, you've lost, you've lost your opportunity. Yeah. Oh man, this is so, <laughs> so much. This, 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 Damon, you know when you hang out with you suffer? Am I making you suffer, Damon? <laughs> no, there's so much in there because I was just thinking through all this stuff, and it's you're exactly right. And I think back to times when I was I, I spoken public before. It's like the the first time you get up and you're trying to run the technology and speak. Where do I stand? Where do I look? All this kind of stuff. And then if you don't have the material down, so you really understand and, and concise, as you said. It's ugly because yeah. I, I came from a technical background, right? So so yeah. you, you can't mm -hmm. get too technical. You have to be just because of the audience, you have to be able to communicate to everyone in the audience. And and I just, it's just bringing back nightmares. It's bringing back <laughs> nightmares because I remember the first time I got up to speak, I was like, what's this microphone and how do I turn this stuff when you're doing it? And then I looked at the, the presentation I did and it, it it was not at the level I should have done for the, the people. I'm like, oh my. But yeah. that's not, it's not bad. It's just good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. But there's, there's so many examples and we see it every day in yeah. some way or another. There's the, the, one of my favorites is the, is the, uh, the dancing microphone. You know, you have someone in front of a room and they forget to keep it here. And so as they're gesturing, they're doing this with the microphone. And so the voice is, 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 is getting farther away. You can't hear. Right. They don't realize that they've got to keep it here. Right. Yeah. Certain, right. And keep it you know, <laughs> consistently at a certain distance in order, right? It for it to do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> right. You know, Damon. So some great comments here. Our dear friend Nicole Donnelly, how can I be of service? Deb is quoting you. How can I be well, of service? Mind your assets. So there's a lot it's of funny because I actually have the it says who can I help today in a little post-it note on my monitor that I look at every day, just because that is so important. And it's, it's, it's great that you're saying that about public speaking, because it really is about the audience. It's not about the speaker. It's not about that at all. So let's go, Rosemary, let's go into some deeper tips here. So, and Damon, you ever hang out with somebody that's just, just so professional and polished and poised. And then you just realize how, how you're not, you know, like, so that's how I feel when I'm with Rosemary. Like today. Yeah. yeah. yeah like today. So, but anyway, so guys, you're just getting a small taste of just what Rosemary, you know, just yeah, her superpower awesome. sharing all these things, but Rosemary, let's go into, uh, you share an enormous amount of tips that I love and enjoy. You talk about the intro. I was reading that, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, the further ado, you kind of blew up LinkedIn a little bit with, uh, you know, uh, on, on what not to say for an intro versus what to say. Could we, could we touch on that a little bit? Oh, yes. That was a fun one. <laughs> it has to do with the, 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 the ceremonial use of the term. Without further ado, let's hear from our guest, Damon. Without further ado. It's something that is used by experienced and inexperienced hosts or you know, introducers of sorts. And it is so, it's like you're ridiculous. It's like you're moving along and then you hit a rock. It's like, what was that? Well, why are you giving me without further ado? Many cases, people don't even know what it means. Right. Because when I wrote that, that blog and I posted social, people were surprised when I defined what ado means, right? It's an it's it a great. English term that has to do with fuss, right? And d delay and unnecessary right. motion without fuss so without fuss let's get to the program and it is just it just clutters the speech you could just as well say it's now time to hear from our guest speaker take it away damon right right, mm -hmm. right? And, yeah and, uh, yeah it's and and then another one of my favorites is our next guest doesn't need an introduction yeah <laughs> he and then you get into the long two-page introduction yeah like, if he doesn't need an introduction just go right into, yeah, and yeah. Here, you know, and here's Kurt Anderson. Yeah. It just becomes, it's, if we're not aware of what, that we're saying it because it just becomes such a formality that everybody else yeah. says it. So you're, you go along. Exactly. And the thing yeah. is, I, I think I'm curious, Damon, if you go back to this show, how many times I've said that. And, and so as I, and now like, you Oh have, my you goodness. Have, 
yeah, you, she has tips on like, you know, what to eat before a presentation. So now like before I'm doing a workshop or before I'm doing this, I'm like, well, all right, what should I eat? What should I drink? And so you share all sorts of amazing, powerful tips. You know, uh, somebody dropped in the, in the comment box here. My first time is when I discovered I needed bifocals. I couldn't look at my notes and see the audience too. That is absolutely. Oh incredible. yeah. I absolutely love and that. Then and then Dan did this, and that's why I laughed and saw her. My I says, just don't try to be funny. You are not yes. funny. <laughs> yes. You don't know what people are, are, are going to think. Right. And yes. Humor is a very sticky wicket. Right. It, it can help you, and it can backfire. Yeah. You only use it when you've tested it enough that you yeah. know it's going to land. Right. But don't, don't, don't try it out on a new audience. They're going to remember and hold on to that right. and then not be thinking about the first two minutes of what you have to say. Yeah. You know, the one thing that you said earlier here, though, that I really, I really enjoy hearing you say is speak from your heart, because yeah. if there's one thing I've learned from corporate until now is that you got to shed the facade you got to show people who you are. You need to really let them see you because then they can connect with you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, as in, in my experience anyway, and I'm not a professional by any means, it's, it just, it just feels better. Mm -hmm. It feels better but, to be able to. But you are a professional because you, you, you've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. It's, it's in a way when you hear it and it's done well, you know it, maybe you can't articulate the why. But if you mm -hmm. start to study it, and I clearly study it, and I enjoy studying good examples and poor examples and learning from everything, that you can tell. And you may not even know, have a domain knowledge about what the person is talking about, but you can sense that there is a, an ease and a love of the topic mm -hmm. and, a, and a love of yourself in giving this information out to people. Yeah. And it's, it's very powerful. And that's, you know, particularly where we came from the last few years of so much change management and so much disruption, you know, CEOs, leaders in any industry really need to understand that what they say carries so much weight. Mm -hmm. And don't just read a speech that someone else wrote for you. Mm -hmm. you know, put, maybe put that aside and just touch on the factual, the data points that have to be conveyed, but put your own personality into it. That's much more effective. Yeah. Absolutely. So I just want to share a couple of things. Here's some comments that people share about Rosemary. And so high level communicator with a prolific career, passion for perfection, most professional, creative, ethical, and knowledgeable uh, communicator, a uh, communication strategist that I know, enthusiastic collaborator, a rare breed. So I, you guys, you're just getting a small taste here again of uh, the, dy uh, the dynamo that Rosemary is. Rosemary, what I want to do now, let's take a, I want to go back in time a little bit. You shared a little bit about, you know, you're uh, kicking off your, not kicking off your career, but your career at MSNBC. What inspired you, your uh, dying, uh, you know, again, you've become a dear friend. I admire you, respect you, worship you, love hanging out with our time Thank together. You. Um, how, what's been a key to your su success and like, what kind of pulled you in this direction of like sharing your superpower of helping people being uh, better communicators and better leaders? Yes. I'm going to take a sip of water and I'm going to answer your question, but because I'm going to take a sip of water with a straw, I wanted to say that this is one of the tips that I share in what to eat or drink or not, mm -hmm. because when I drink from a straw, I'm not marring my lipstick. And I'm also not putting no, a glass. I told you. I have to. I, I have to remember you. that. I, I have to get the Damon, straw. Damon, stop spreading. You know. Okay. So anyway, go <laughs> yeah. ahead. Mary, Thank go you. Back. But mostly, Thank I don't have to. I don't have to tip the glass yeah. over and maybe. I've been, Damon, I've been telling you that for two years. My, my yeah, I know. I know. I know. I gotta get the straw. Out, <laughs> but so. you have to hydrate. It's important. Yeah, to hydrate. hydrate. Yes, that's right. The so the answer to your question, uh, and this is this is a, a, a good one because it forces me to be concise. It, and, and give you the, my best answer. Mm. You know, this this never came easy to me. I do have been public about the fact that for most of my my early career, I stuttered. I stuttered really badly, really? and I stuttered because it comes from childhood trauma, and it came from being bilingual and, and having a, a whole mess with Spanish English. But it had a lot to do with uh, with a lot of psychological trauma. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that I had this difficulty as a, in my 
college years and well into my first uh, decade as a professional, I tried to hide it. And I, I tried not to speak or I tried to choose words that were safe that I knew I could pronounce. I had a lot of difficulty with S and with P words, P, 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 P. And then I found a coach and, and I was able to overcome it. But what really helped was the microphone. And I realized it quite by accident. I was in journalism in school. I was a broadcast journalism major. I had to use a microphone for film and for radio and TV. I tried to avoid it. But when I had to speak into a microphone, it was like, this is it. This is life or death. You've got to say this correctly into this device. There's no turning back. There's no do-over. You've got to get it right. That sense of urgency gave me maybe a prod that said, you've got to get your tongue, your lips to do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of self-administered therapy in, 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 in terms of the, uh, the correction or the management, the management of the stammer. You never get rid of it. It's there. And sometimes when I get a little nervous or sometimes like when I have to call like IRS or something and something I don't want to do, you know, I start to feel like, uh, my tongue is a little heavy mm -hmm. and it's there. It never really goes away. You learn to manage it. So the, the, the career progression was always in public relations, spokesperson work. I evolved into higher levels of responsibility to the point where after leaving Univision after two years as head of public relations with the network, I saw my path clear to starting a consulting business to help executives do what I learned to do, both in terms of my my personal experience, as well as observing others and working with broadcast journalists and, and all that collective skill that I hope will bring a fresh set of techniques that people can adopt. It's not, it's not by, you know, there's a lot of different ways to teach public speaking, but what I laid out at the beginning of our time together about it really coming from the heart, it being authentic, about it being maybe mechanically a little faulty, but you have to speak from the heart. And that, that to me is really the best way that I can create a transformation in the people who come to me for, for help. Man, that is just very so, cool. That very so cool. Good. And I love, and I want to tie in, you said a couple of things and er, earlier you were talking about like the fear of public speaking and it doesn't necessarily have to be in front of a crowd or an audience. It can, like you mm -hmm. said, it could be uh, a presentation at work. It could be a coworker. It could be uh, confronting a challenging situation that you're uncomfortable with. But um, I keep referring to your blog. I just love your blog. You have uh, butterflies, getting your butterflies, a fly mm -hmm. information. Getting your butterfly. I have never the heard fly that information. That's have awesome. You heard that one, Damon? So no, I never have. And, and uh, you have the rule of three: butterflies, fly information. Talk. Can you share a little bit of, of that concept of like how can we overcome that fear, regardless of what we're facing, and how do we get our butterflies to fly information? Yes, it is. It's not original to me, and I can't remember exactly where it came from. It was a bit of an obscure source, but I loved and still love the the imagery, that metaphor. In fact, I did a, a video where I put butterflies all over my <laughs> my my face in my in my chest just to illustrate that the butterflies right. were there. And you can't make them go away. And sometimes it's a good thing. It's almost like you are you are caffeinated, highly caffeinated, right? And so you have that little shaky feeling. And that if you tame that to be your your friend and not your foe. And to energize you, you say, okay, I'm a little jittery. I mean, I can keep my legs from wobbling. Maybe I'll hold on to the lectern a little bit tighter or maybe not at all. I'll just place them very gently on top of my, my notes. You learn how to deal with it and it can energize you. Yeah. There are some people who go to extremes to get the heart rate going and the, you know, the heart pounding and, you know, the, the fast breathing like um, Tony Robbins. Mm. He makes no secret of the fact that when he does these big, 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 big mega rallies, mm -hmm. motivational uh, conferences, he does a trampoline. He has a trampoline backstage mm -hmm. and he jumps on that trampoline and, and gets his heart ring. He yells and he, he just be becomes a psycho. And then when he goes on that stage, he's right. right? Mm -hmm. He is all charged. That works for him. Right. That works for him. And he uses that. So we too can use the butterflies fluttering to lift us to a higher level of performance. The worst thing to do is try to, to, to tampen it. Right. Don't drink a glass of wine. 
<laughs> don't take a, you know, a, a sedative of any kind. Don't go in that direction. You can breathe, do deep breathing. There's a lot of great breath techniques. I have some of that in my website, on my, in my blog, about either blowing through a straw or doing uh, a, a, a four-step uh, breathing cycle. You can meditate. You can visualize a moment of great joy, great success, like the birth of your child. Something to, that brings you joy where you're not identifying with the terror of walking to that microphone or that webcam. Because again, we have to factor in that some people are still terrified of the webcam mm -hmm. because they can't see the people at the other end. Mm -hmm. and so that sense of God, who, who's, who's in there, I, I, I can't talk to a little black circle. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, some people fear that more than actually being in front of live people. So whatever your scenario is, you know that you can use that, that uh, it's really not so much fear, it's social anxiety, performance anxiety. You know, it has a name, it has a really weird name. It's called glossophobia, glossophobia, like gloss, glossophobia. Mm -hmm. And it is a, uh, a, uh, a medical term for, people, for, for performance anxiety, for stage fright. You know, like how your brain goes, brain freezes and your tongue sort of gets mm -hmm. stuck in your mouth and your palms get sweaty and a number of things. Some people actually vomit, you know, and, and that happens still to a lot of lots of great performers who do this kind of ritual, like gut wrenching thing before they go on stage and then they go on stage and they just, you know, bring the house down. Right. Right. Man, this is awesome. You have another yeah. title, Love is a Path to Public Speaking. And you touch on this, you know, mm -hmm. sharing, being your authentic self, sharing your passion, so on and so forth. Have you had times, you know, in your pro prolific career, have you had times where you were on stage or maybe walked off stage and you're like, man, I could have done a little bit better or other times you're like, man, I just really crushed it on that. You know, what, what's been your sense, like either uh, say during the presentation where if it's uh, maybe going great, you know, where do you take it from there? Or if it's not going so great, what are what's, any tips in the midst of a presentation that you would give for guidance? Anybody here that's a public speaker? Yes. That takes a lot of courage and a lot of self-confidence to go off script. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons that I chose to go in the direction that I'm in now, having my own consulting practice, mm -hmm. is that I was g growing a little weary of having to speak someone else's words, mm -hmm. being the, the corporate spokesperson for my employer. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that's part of the job description, certainly. But sometimes one has to say words that you don't really believe, mm -hmm. that are not your own. You're just a mouthpiece. You're just a, a conduit for delivering the corporate message. Mm -hmm. And when it, it coincides with your own values and your own sense of purpose, wonderful. But sometimes it doesn't. And so that's a little bit difficult because, yeah, you're just reading a script. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunately something that's very difficult to work around because that's, that's your job. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, if you find yourself, if you're a, a, an entrepreneur, you're, if you're your own boss, then, of course, you have that latitude. Mm -hmm. to 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 speak mm -hmm. from the heart and to get off script mm -hmm. a lot has to do with how you see the audience reacting mm -hmm. right if you see that people are reacting in a certain way to something you've said and they're really excited you might just want to go off script and instead of following what's on your page you might want to have a conversation mm -hmm. a q and a hey you know what i'm going to toss my script because i want to hear from you how does, how does what I am yeah. saying sound to you? I want to hear your reaction. Mm -hmm. It opens it up and it changes the dynamic. And that can be extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's a fantastic yeah. tip. You, you know, so let's go back a couple years ago. I don't know. Did you guys hear like a couple years ago, there was like this little pandemic thing that went on. I don't know if, if you guys are aware. <laughs> Damon, did you know about that at all? So I heard something. I heard some, like something in the news or something. But yeah. anyway, so dynamic change. So everybody forced to pivot in March of 2020. Mm -hmm. And now, it, you know, knock on wood, or hopefully it seems like we're kind of coming back out. So now we have live events. People are now flying. There's no mask on uh, uh, on flights. So are we getting back to our old life? But you know, what is our new life going to look like? So you know, as we had to pivot to get online and really have uh, a strong Zoom presence, Rosemary, what advice do you have for folks now that maybe um, I don't know about you guys, but you know, if you became a little socially lazy, 
you know, now you're like getting back in person. Are you a little bit awkward? You know, so any advice for folks as we kind of get back out in the world on how they should be approaching their, their, themselves to be better communicators? Yes. My advice is to take what you learned from two years on Zoom or Teams or whatever your platform of choice was and, and use that to bring to the real world. Mm -hmm. That is, if you were paying attention to doing this, this rectangle well, mm -hmm. many people did not step up. Mm -hmm. And so this is a wonderful place to practice good public speaking techniques mm -hmm. because you're in a very immersive, very intimate, even though we're not together physically, we are very intimate because we're looking at each other mm -hmm. in ways that we wouldn't ordinarily in real life. So this is a place to practice your facial expressions, your upper body language, your cadence of speech, and really practice the skills you can bring to your physical spaces. Mm -hmm. And also, and this is another dimension that's going to be challenging, it's even challenging for me, is how do you work with people who are co-located and under the same roof that you are, and those that are distributed in other places? And how do you make everyone feel equal? Mm -hmm. How do you create what's called digital parity mm -hmm. and have a uh, sense of inclusion so that people who aren't there can ask their questions and make their ideas heard and feel like you're that the speaker is communicating equally with the others and that this interaction that's that's difficult to do. Yeah, it's it's possible and there's techniques to do that, but mm -hmm. that's where we all I think need to step up. Perfect. Go ahead, Damon. No, that's that's a that's a great thing to point out because we're going hybrid. I mean, I don't care what anybody thinks. There's going to be hybrid mm -hmm. uh, workers for a long, long time because we've hired remote workers. I mean, we have so, mm -hmm. and that the digital parity is really something. You know, as mm -hmm. as much as it was when everyone was digital or most people were digital, and you're trying to figure out how do you create a team when everybody's not in the same room, you have to do that now when people are here and there it's mm -hmm. it's uh that intentionality of the whole thing has to be there otherwise you're going to lose people yeah and i and i want to uh i caught you i caught an interview that you did and it was uh you talked uh the, the conversation was a little bit about structural variety and so a couple of friends on the program today we have john baglino dan bigger they're with a SaaS company amazing wonderful company of tessa so when they're doing uh say demos or for any of our folks out there doing sales selling themselves, selling their product, their service, so on and so forth. You also have a great newsletter. You're talking about the pregnant pause. So if I'm, if, if this is a, if I can combine these two a little bit, can you talk a little bit the value, the power of the pregnant pause? And if you, if you recall that conversation on that structural variety of like, how do you mix things up a little bit to get away from like that, that droning on monologue? Can you share a little bit there? Oh yes. This is one of my favorite, uh, my maybe second favorite topic. The, well, when we're, on, an, on a virtual meeting, there is a tendency to go on and on and on. There's also a tendency to read from notes that we may have in front of us, or that may be on a screen, on the same screen, we're doing screen share, or mm -hmm. we divided our screen so that we don't forget anything. So we want to be sure to be reading. That creates a, a monotone, a, a very robotic way of, of speaking. And that's not natural. And we also have to factor in latency, how sometimes sound isn't optimal because we're going through so many circuits to so many different places. Mm -hmm. And we don't know even what kind of equipment is on the other side, how people are hearing us. Mm -hmm. So it's important to speak slowly and to use this, the magnificent pause as a way to draw attention back to you. Right? <laughs> oh, I forgot what I was going to say, right? Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Like, I felt myself like physically like captivated. Yeah, that yeah. was so. Could could we could we do that? Could again? Do that again? Yeah. <laughs> so what, Rose, you do that? So what Rosemary, you do that? Rose, Damon, <laughs> let's talk about the pregnant pause real quick. So how? Uh, so Damon, let's 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 talk about that for a second. What's going on in your world right now? That would be good to talk about. Okay. Good job. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, all right. Mm -hmm. So, what I yeah. <laughs> see, it's, it's captivating. Well, another another technique before we run out of time is before you start speaking, Damon, take a good inhale. 
when you inhale, people think, oh, he's going to say something important. He's getting his lungs ready. He's going to give me something good. Very, very powerful. Yeah. You, with me, though, it's usually because I'm doing this. Yeah. I get that going. <laughs> but okay. and so at the same time, you're allowing people to process what you said and to formulate their own reaction and their questions. Because sometimes we just chatter away and, and someone may want to say something and forget what they wanted to say because you we were just going on chattering away. Right. It, it helps us as speakers also to create, to think a little better. Yeah. Pregnant well, person. yeah. Drop the mic. That was, that was so good. That was so powerful. So again, you know, again, we have different walks of life and I, and I know I'm keeping you cause I know you have a bit, you're, busy person. And we, uh, I, I have two more questions for you that I want to chime into. So again, as we're speaking to manufacturers and maybe they're in sale, you know, maybe they're not doing public speaking per se, but this was just such a powerful, you know, you talk, let's recap a few things real quick, Damon, and, and cover my back on this. We talk, you know, having that real powerful introduction, you know, speaking clearly, communicating, you know, we, this great exercise with the pregnant pause, you know, not rambling on a little bit too long or, you know, uh, my friends in sales call it the, I hate to go there, you know, throwing up on themselves type of thing, right? How can we be better? You know, a, a great way to be a, a great communicator, be a good listener, right? We have Correct. two ears and one mouth. So being a great listener is another great way to be a wonderful communicator. So let's go here, Rosemary. I have two questions left. Number one, we, uh, we're singing, speaking to a lot of manufacturers and, you know, uh, labor shortage, workforce development, a lot of challenges. You're very familiar with this. We've been really encouraging, promoting uh, diversity, manufacturing, and, and women in manufacturing, diversity in manufacturing, so on and so forth. And for folks that chimed in a little bit late, you were the first contributor, uh, Hispanic contributor to MSNBC. What advice, suggestions do you have for any small business owners, any entrepreneurs, manufacturers out there? How, what advice or tips do you have? Not you've Phenomenal tips on better communication. How could they help diversify their team, their staff? Any suggestions there uh, from your experience? There's wonderful people everywhere that you just have to know how to source them. Mm -hmm. Don't just go with the people you know. Break out of those networks because, look, we tend to feel comfortable with people who look and sound like us. Mm -hmm. Maybe went to the same school, worship at the same church, go to the same community, sports activities. Break out of that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and network with people who are in different communities mm -hmm. who can be wonderful resources and referral, uh, referral points right. that can bring you people who have the skills, certainly mm -hmm. who have the, there's the skills, there's a lot of talent out there, but who may not necessarily be in your radar. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's a matter of breaking out of the comfort zone of sameness mm -hmm. and, and listening to mm -hmm. other communities and, but finding those wonderful allies uh, who can be your your guides to understand where the talent resides in other communities? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I'm going to have a pregnant pause right here, Damon. Breaking out of your comfort zone of sameness. Yeah, that's a pregnant pause right there. Breaking out of your comfort zone of sameness. So that was a very powerful. Again, a lot of great comments here. Ingor, happy Friday to you, my friend. Uh, Nicole dropped another comment. Deb Curtis, Deb, thank you for joining us today. So, guys, we're going to close out on this. Rosemary, you ready for our last question? Well, and you know what? It's maybe a question and a half. So, I'm asking for a friend. Somebody like so. When you do these presentations, you talk about uh, you know uh, presentation. Your you know drink from a straw. What to wear? Like workout clothes, pajama bottoms. Like, should we not be wearing? No, I'm just, I'm just asking for a friend, not for, okay. But anyway, no. my last question. Look, look, very quickly, very quickly. I am advocating and trying to model a real life set. So everything you see behind me is real. Right. And it's there on purpose. These are things that make me happy that represent yeah. a little bit of my personality. Try if you can, if you can to not use a virtual background. And if you do use a virtual background, meaning blur, or certainly not the Golden Gate Bridge, please get use a green screen and the proper lighting so that your face, yeah. your eyes, your your gestures can be crisp. Yeah. Because if not, you you look funny. And at this point in time, two years later, we got to get this, guys. We have to step up and say enough. Right. And because all of this represents who we are, no matter what business you're in. 
Yeah, that that virtual the virtual backgrounds. I, it's the, it's funny you say that because that is one of the reasons I've never used a virtual background is because I don't like the little fuzzy around you and it just yeah. does it, it just makes well, you look weird. Especially when you don't have hair, it makes it even worse. So okay, we're gonna close out on this, <laughs> Rosemary. Yeah, and you know what? When we get offline, maybe you could give me some uh, some hair advice for. On, but that's another. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's, that's we'll, out of my league. We'll, we'll, my we'll talk about we'll talk about that on Monday. So again, guys, I want you know as we wind down, down, please connect with Rosemary on LinkedIn. Go to her website. I know I've said it eighty times. Do yourself a favor. Just you got a, a, a taste of just the powerful tips, advice, mm -hmm. suggestions that she has to up your game. Reach out to Rosemary. Connect with her. Rosemary, let's close out on this. You put out a post recently on the power of the close. Mm -hmm. We're at the end of the session. What advice, suggestions do you have? Take us, let's take us home right now. How do you have a powerful close for our friends and family here on the program today? First, a call to action. A call to action would be to really take a look at the way you're communicating and find ways that you can be more authentic more true to yourself and really fall in love with what you're saying and with the audience. So have an attitude of service. So at the end of a presentation, make sure that everyone has understood, restate your main ideas and give them a call to action. Have them do something mm -hmm. to, to, to read something, to act on something, but, but don't just let it evaporate. Mm -hmm. Give your thank you, give your acknowledgments, but but keep the conversation going in the sense of this is this is the call to action to being better at public speaking. That that that's the best way to close. the The opening is as, as important as the close, but but you have to have a succinct summary and tell them what you want them to do. All right, pregnant, pregnant pause. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic. Drop the mic. So, guys, we're going to wind down. I know we, we ran over a little bit. So, um, Rosemary, thank you. I just want to thank you for your friendship. I just I can't tell how much uh, admiration, respect I have for you. I love our time together. Please, again, guys, connect with Rosemary here on LinkedIn. Check out her website. She has all sorts of information. I know you're working on a book. We have an exciting book. Woo! Man. She's working on a book, Damon. So hit. She has a lot of great things coming out, you guys. If you don't feel that you're at top of your game, get old Rosemary. She can help you elevate your game. So, we wish everybody an amazing, wonderful weekend. Thank you for joining us today. We know how busy everybody is. We never take this for granted, boy. We appreciate every each and every single one of you for joining yes. us here today. So, Damon, we're gonna take it away. But before we do, let's give everybody. Could how about could everybody stand up, please? pregnant pause let's yes. give a round of applause for rosemary for the dynamic and powerful wonderful presentation these great tips these this great advice rosemary i am you're on my mind literally daily i'm like okay what, what would rose it's like almost like what would rosemary tell me to do right now so anyway with that thank you we're gonna close it out guys god bless everybody out there thank you Cr keep crushing it this guy so first off thank this person this wonderful beautiful soul here and then let's thank this guy over here. Damon, take it away, dude. All right, Kurt. Thanks so much. The guy over there. Thanks, everyone. Rosemary, thank you so much. It was awesome. Good. Just just, just hearing you speak makes me a better speaker it's just, because it's of this just today. Music. It's just, it so, did, just, it's just it, music to your ears. It is. It is. Thanks so much. And thanks the guests. I mean, people coming back week, week in and week out. We just love it. We love being able to do this. Kurt and I, honestly, we are so blessed. We, if you don't think we just sat back and go, how could we get great guests like Rotary to come and talk with us every every week? We're just we're so blessed. And so blessed. thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back again, again next week. And have an awesome weekend. We're running into spring and summer and better weather. And uh, just enjoy it. Yep. We're thank out for you. now. Stay Bye. safe. Thank you. Thank you.